No. Yeah. Are you actually? Yeah. Oh, this is sick. Can I be in it? Okay, so um, the first question we're going to ask, guys, so we, I gave you these essays in Schoology over the holidays to have a look at. Um, we'll only do one for the video. Um, but the first question we're going to ask here is which of the three is the easiest? Okay, because in your exam, you're going to be given two essays to do. Okay? Um, and you're given a choice of four. Okay, so of these, which one is the easiest and why? Top one. Top one? Yeah. Why? Because you can talk about any event. Okay, so outline the key event of, of a significant economic event. So what's the obvious event you're going to talk about? Depression. Depression. Okay, but then the second part, to what extent was this event a force for change in American society? Or was it a force for change? Yeah. Which type of change in particular? Social, cultural, or political? <laughs> Very good. Okay, this is a whole new deal. Yeah? Now, that's great to help you with your revision, but the bad news is, guys, I'm going to tell you this now, you're not going to get a question like that in your exam. Okay? The question is divided up into two parts, nice and easy for you like that. Unfortunately, I've written your exam, and you're not going to get a question like that. Julia. Oh, um, no, it's Lauren. Um, you know how it says that A and then B? Yeah. In your paragraphs... Do you talk about B or what? That's why well, I'm this is really one really big paragraph, okay. and this would be probably another three. Okay? We're not going to do that one today, because there's no point, because you're not going to do something like that in the exam. Okay? What you are going to get is something more like this. Okay? Only one question, or just one, one part like that. Yeah? One phrase, one question, uh, and then you're going to have to write it into that. Okay? So let's look at the two and we'll do, you guys can choose which one you want to do. We'll do both today, but for the purpose of the video, we'll just do one together and you can choose which one. So which one of these two do you think might be easier? Outline the changes experienced by a key social group in your time period or evaluate the accuracy of the statement. Economic forces are the most important factor in bringing about social and political change. Which one? They're both pretty difficult. Which one would you maybe lean to over the other? Alright. Yeah. Seems less extensive, like a time frame given. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's got a few dot points there that you can refer to. We'll talk about in a minute. What, Lauren? Two or three? Two. That Lauren. Two. Oh, right. Which one are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, I would agree with you that two is probably easier than three. Okay. But what? Why is two hard? So yes, you can talk. You get to talk about the whole time period, which is good. But why is two going to be? What's what's the problem with choosing a social group? Well, what social groups can you choose from? What is a social group? What's come? Tell me. If you did this at, over the holidays, which social group did you talk about? Working. You talked about working class, yeah. But did they experience change over the time period? I said farmers. Farmers is a good one, yeah. Women, mm. African Americans, or perhaps new migrants are other groups that you could talk about. Okay, but for the purposes of of today, so which one for the we're going to do a plan, an extended plan for this essay in the next twenty minutes. Okay. So, which social group would you like to discuss here? The two best options are probably going to be farmers, as James suggested, or women. Which one would you like to discuss? Farmers. Farmers? Okay, let's do that. Right. So, uh, we're going to do, so write down the question, guys. Don't write the dot points.
Okay, so any essay starts with a good introduction, yeah? So what are we going to write in the introduction? So what's a good way to start the essay? In history, what's there are three things. Okay, let's rephrase that a different, different way. In history, there's three things you're looking for in the introduction to give a good introduction. What are they? Good. A little bit of context or background information related to the essay. Some sort of statement. And in this case, what are we going to say about the farmers? Did they experience significant change? Yes or no? Yes. You would have to argue yes. So why don't we write that as our almost like our hypothesis in the introduction. Okay? So, intro. So let's write a dot point about, just, so farmers. Uh, we're an important group. in American society. Okay, they probably, they're a significant part of the population. Okay. Um, farmers were an important group in American society who experienced considerable change. during the time period. Okay, what are we going to write next? Background about the time period. Yeah, a little bit. Or, yes, probably a little bit more contextual information might be good, but we could really get into here what the change was that farmers experienced. Agree? So, let's go through these dot points. What change did farmers experience at the beginning of the time period, or into the 20s, which caused them change? The boom. The boom. So, what about the boom in particular for farmers helped them, or some of them, benefit from the boom? Very good. Okay. So, the 19, well, the beginning of the time period, Now, at the beginning of the time period, tell me about farmers at the, at the start, people, because this is going to be our first paragraph. Were they doing well or not so good after World War I? Mm -hmm. Hang on a minute. Mm -hmm. World War I. Was it good or bad at the farmers? Straight after World War I. Straight after World War I. Oh, then it was good. It was good because yeah. Europe was offline, they were selling more, that their, their business was booming, agreed? Yeah. Okay? So, at the beginning of the time period, so positive change for farmers. Mechanisation brought what? Increased production. Yeah. However, So there's two positive aspects. So as we move through the time period, how does the, the change affect farmers in a negative way? Um, it's not to overproduce. Good. So however, overproduction and then what what geographical disaster affected farmers dust in a big way? The dust bowl. However, overproduction and the dust bowl caused negative consequences. We are going, so let's refer back, let's see if we've covered these dot points in our introduction so far. Because effectively, we, you know, we've told the reader now what, the, what our essay is going to be about. How, are we, about, according to our introduction, how are we going to describe the group at the beginning of the time period? Yes, we're going to say that as a result of World War I, farmers did very, very well. Okay, that's going to be our first body paragraph. 
Okay? Next, are we going to talk about the methods and strategies used by the group to bring about change? Yes, we're going to talk about mechanisation and how that led to increased production and a boom for some farmers during the 1920s. Are we going to talk about other forces that brought about change for the group? Yes. We're going to say, however, in our next paragraph, that overproduction and then the dust bowl led to you know, negative change for farmers. Agreed? And in our conclusion, we can talk about the extent of that change. Or maybe even we could talk about African Americans. Okay, and how they didn't really change at all. They were still poor and unemployed. Okay? Right, so let's write our first body paragraph, people. Here's what you're going to do. Right about, can you now, it's going to be about World War I, okay, or the aftermath of World War I. Can you guys see if you can come up with three dot points of content that you would include in that paragraph about farmers in World War I? Okay, and how they emerged out of World War I in a positive way. Right, so what are we saying? What's what's the first point here we're going to write? Go. Um, that after World War One, farmers had to supply for America and Europe. Right, so during World War One. Yeah. Okay, so what, what else could we write in there to show our knowledge of the topic in terms of America? And not, not related to farmers, but just to show me, the Marco or Miss McGovern, that you know stuff. What was America's involvement in World War One? Could you say that they were producing for both sides? Yeah. yeah, so you could say that they didn't come into it till 1917. Yeah, and in that three years, what did they do? Make money. Right? So you could say, in particular, so for farmers, uh, I would start it off by saying um, that because of America's lack of involvement in World War One until 1917, um, farming and other industries in the United States saw substantial benefits, yeah, in the years of the war. The American farmers were able to sell their much needed grain and agricultural products to um, the countries fighting in Europe. Agreed? So far, so good. Now, to go on with Lauren's point, I agree, Lauren, that continued after the war. Why? Because what about France and Europe and um, if they were water on their own, they could produce their own food because they're so badly damaged. They relied on um, America to import a lot of their food because they couldn't do it themselves. Exactly, Mara. Well done. Okay, so these countries are war torn, their populations have been decimated, the countryside's torn to shreds. Okay, they are still buying American products. Now, why else is that good for so in those early years after World War One, are farmers receiving a pretty good price for their products? Yes, they are. So they're making good money, okay? Because there's a shortage of products, you know, in Europe and, and overseas because of the war. So far, so good, okay? So we've, are we cool with that paragraph? We've described the group at the beginning of the time period. They're, they're prospering due to the effects of World War One on the United States. So far, so good. Yeah. Lauren, you okay? Yeah. Got you, you're right. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> How about that? We'll, do, we'll go with that, that's better. Yeah. Right. Okay. Our next paragraph then that is going to be about mechanisation. <coughs> Off you go. To show your knowledge, 
link it in to Henry Ford. Watch it on YouTube. Yeah, I will certainly watch it. Only so you can hear your voice as you're walking past the camera. <laughs> That's me! Yeah, that's a good thing. Are you actually using it on YouTube? Huh? He's using it on YouTube. Maybe. Yeah, for the he's just watching so called like 400 views. We can get, get you there. <laughs> yeah, it's because everyone knows about it. I still haven't seen that yet. Seriously? It's Make it to 400 and more. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, no, no, don't be sorry. Bye, I'm Jules. Run, the classes are run for you, not for me. I'd much rather be going home playing with Peanut. How's Peanut? That's still great. Right, people, let's not waste our time because I would like to go home and see my child. So, we're saying uh, mechanisation was a key thing that brought about change for farmers, yeah? How? So what, how can we start it off? What are we saying? During the 1920s, there was an economic boom in the United States. Agree? That economic boom was based on what? The invention of Model T Fords. Good. So the assembly line production of Model T Fords. Yes? Now, by extension, mechanisation is what? What is mechanisation? The use of, of machinery to help farming. So how did the machinery get produced? Quickly, cheaply, and easily, using the same methods of production that Ford used. Okay? So, because of Ford's assembly line, farmers, or the process of creating these mechanised machines to help in farming, many farmers around the country were able to purchase um, machines like harvesters yeah, to assist in the farming process for the first time. So, this then led to what? So, the, using these machines to help in the farming process gave farmers the ability to produce more at a cheaper cost, which meant hopefully their profits would increase. Yeah? It also led to perhaps more land being cultivated because you had machines now to do the work instead of people. We can say, you know, during most of the, up until the late 1920s, um, that changed, that the, the farmers still continued to benefit from mechanisation and um, those farming practices, agreed? But as the depression neared, what happened to agricultural prices? They began to drop. Now that's going to be our linking sentence into our next paragraph, okay? Next paragraph, depression and dust bowl. Same thing. This is you know fairly substantial paragraph here. You might want to, if you might, no, probably just keep it as one. See if you can come up with four dot points about the change that occurred to farmers as a result of these two things.
Okay. So, how are the farmers affected by the depression in the dust box? Go on, Chess. Huh? Tell me one reason that the, part, the farmers were affected by the depression in the dust box. Um, that people... Go with the depression first. Yeah, the Wall Street crash and how people sold all their shares due to panic. And that caused... Um, they don't have money to provide for their family, so they weren't able to buy the farmers' produce. Okay, good. Yeah. But let's go back to another more longer term problem which kind of contributed to all that. Um, could it be for the overproduction? Good. Yeah, so unfortunately for the farmers, this mechanisation and this expansion actually went too far. And it, and it led to a situation of overproduction, which led to what? Um, they ripped up all the prices. Which led to a decrease in the price that the farmers were getting for the products that they were trying to sell, which meant that they couldn't start, you know, they couldn't repay their loans, they were getting no income. Mm -hmm. Effectively, the product, the product they were producing was worthless. Okay? Why couldn't they sell it overseas? Yes. Very good. Did you put that in your point? Fantastic. Well done. Okay, then also, Chesney, I agree with you. Okay, once the depression hit hard, people were unable to buy the grain, the products and stuff that the farmers were producing because no one had any money to do it. Okay, and that contributed to the problem. Make sure you put that, that you know, overproduction was a key cause of the problem for the farmers, yeah? Okay, now this is compounded by the economic, the, sorry, the environmental force, which is the dust bowl. Someone tell me about the dust bowl. Why is that bad for farmers? Um, Go on, Lauren. Um, before, they had been over farming the land. Yep. And then a drought hit through Arkansas and Oklahoma. Good. And um, it caused all the land to not be able to be farmed and they all had to move. So why is it called the dust bowl then? Good, so the topsoil, the most productive part of the soil, simply blew away, which meant that into the near future they weren't going to be able to grow anything either because the good soil that they could grow it in is God knows where. No, we'll talk about California in a minute. Yeah? So, uh, the dust bowl had significant consequences okay? um, because it took away their viability, their ability to farm the land. And as a result of that, yes, keep going. What happened to the farmers? Where did they move? California. They moved to California because that was an area which wasn't so badly affected. Or it wasn't really affected at all because it grew a different type of crop. Okay, and those people became known as? Okies and Arkies. Yeah, very good. Now, we could include another paragraph. That's a fairly substantial essay already. Okay? You get a relatively good mark for that. What else could we include here as the next paragraph to kind of finish it off? Other forces that brought about change for the group. So think New Deal. And how is that a force for change? Good. Okay, so our last paragraph. Yep, yeah, let's talk about Roosevelt and the New Deal and the government. Okay, let's see if you can put in maybe some examples of alphabet agencies. Okay, or the steps that the government took, both maybe to a smaller extent Hoover, but definitely Roosevelt, in an attempt to um, get the farming community back on track. We're talking about the AAA, and I would also include here the Tennessee Valley Authority.
Okay, so we're saying that um, political forces like the New Deal also came in towards the end of the time period and changed the lives for many farmers. Yeah, we're saying that they tried to get farming back on track with some alphabet agencies like the Agricultural Adjustment Agency, which was somewhat of a failure, but perhaps the Farm Credit Administration later on in New Deal 2, I think it is, mm -hmm. yeah, um, was perhaps more successful okay, in getting farmers back to their livelihood. The Tennessee Valley Authority was really beneficial for farmers in that area because not only did it provide them with hydroelectricity for the first time, but also irrigation water for their crops. Did you mention anything about how Hoover tried to buy the crops at a higher You could, yeah. You could start your paragraph off by saying Hoover, as part of his solutions to depression, did try um, some, some help, but um, that was probably unsuccessful. Okay? Right, lastly, okay, we need to evaluate the extent of change. So what are we saying? Are farmers' lives better or worse at the end? Worse, yeah? Okay, so they did go through a period of, you know, some growth and um, good times, but, you know, because of perhaps their gung-ho attitude, link it in, laissez-faire, Republican policies, lack of regulation, okay, unfortunately many of their decisions actually cause them negative consequences rather than positive, yeah? Agreed? Now, who else are we going to say here? What, what's another group of farmers who we haven't discussed? Sharecroppers. Sharecroppers and African Americans. Have they experienced any change here? If so, it's got to be negative. They've lost jobs due to mechanisation and African Americans are a group that has not benefited from any of the New Deal change. So can we include that in our conclusion as well? Okay? You okay, Kochi? Yeah. Right, there you go. YouTube, we're done. Bye. Everyone say bye. Bye. bye.